Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Sarah Bellas. Uh, today I'll be delving into my life experience with eczema. Um, it is a chronic condition, something that you're gonna deal with the rest of your life. Basically like paralysis, but it's a different kind of form. Um, so basically I'm gonna go into what triggers my eczema, uh, what habits I use to circumvent it, and different products that I use to help it. And hopefully the video is very informative and you learn a lot and you can learn how you can live with eczema too if you do have it as well. So, And if you haven't already, please subscribe. should be in the top left or right hand corner and hopefully enjoy the video. So a little background on my particular situation with eczema. Um, I developed it when I was a baby. Uh, they say it could be genetic, but a lot of... A few people in my family have it, but not all of them. So mainly for me, I believe it's environmental, but you would have to do your own testing to verify that. Um, it was pretty much really bad when I was a kid, so it was kind of embarrassing because growing up in Miami, you know, it's hot and all that kind of stuff, but you know, when your legs are scarred up from eczema, you know, and for me, it got to be the point where it was painful because as far as like my skin was constantly cracking, we had no idea what to do, we didn't know what, what creams to use, what lotion didn't work, what did work I mean there was a time I was using like the cocoa butter lotion and like that was probably like one of the worst lotions I could have probably used but we just had no idea what actually worked so um, the secret for me ended up being moving up to Atlanta fortunately and my skin cleared up pretty much overnight um, it, it very minor outbreaks mainly in the summertime when it's hot and humid like I said earlier as far as you know what causes my eczema so but drastically the weather is the main thing that helps um, my skin so luckily moved up here whatever I was doing with my skin as far as what the doctor prescribed for me was working so thank god I had that resolution but every time I do go down to Miami however my skin can break out especially if it's like in the middle of summer and that kind of thing so for me especially going from like my teen years onward it's mainly cleared up every now and then I'll have a little something something but it's not near what it was when I was a kid and thank god for that because it was truly painful and embarrassing and something that you didn't want to deal with you feel like it's only you that has to deal with it and you know what kid wants to go around with like marked up legs because of eczema so luckily it did clear up for the majority but it's something that I will have to deal with the rest of my life so jumping right into it um I'm gonna go into what triggers my eczema so um from what I know eczema is pretty common um, a lot of kids develop it and then it can either go away or it can still kind of grow up with you into adulthood. I unfortunately have it with me pretty much a whole life. Um, it's not as bad as it used to be when I was a kid, uh, mainly because I had different products now that I use and I know it triggers my eczema so I tend to avoid it if I can. Typically what tends to trigger my eczema is weather related. Um, I can do humid heat. Um, anything that can give me heat rash or anything like that, it can turn from heat rash to eczema pretty quickly. Uh, also, my skin is very sensitive to saltwater pools uh, or saltwater ocean in general. I can't be in it for too long or else my skin get really dry and really flaky and it's just gross. Also, just regular pools with chlorine. It's not really good for my skin because it tends to dry it out really badly. So basically, I was not the fun summer kid. I couldn't spend too long on the beach. I couldn't spend too long in the pool. But, you know, pretty much as long as I don't stay in there too long, I jump right into the shower and moisturize pretty quickly. It's not too bad, but I still have to be very mindful of when I'm in those situations of not staying in too long and knowing what my skin's going to respond to and that kind of thing. So I just have to be aware of that. Uh... I know when, I'm, when I used to live in Miami, um, it was very bad in Miami because of humid heats and that kind of thing. But since I've been in Atlanta, it's been a lot better. I barely even have it. Every so now and again, I'll have a little bit of outbreak. But again, it's mostly sort of during the summertime when it's humid out and hot. And, you know, obviously I'm going to be, you know, showing skin. So this is unavoidable. But even then, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be when I was a kid. So it's just like little stuff on my arms. But... I pretty much know how to handle it and make sure it stays under control so that way I'm just not a um, flaking monster. So My skin is also very sensitive to uh, any kind of fragrance based products for the skin that includes lotion and 
uh, any kind of cleanser, it can't have any kind of fragrance whatsoever, or else it'll make my skin completely dry. I may not develop eczema, but my skin can get kind of chapped. So I have to be very mindful of anything that has too much fragrance. So most Bath and Body Work products I cannot use, except the candles, because I always have an adverse reaction to it. So I try to stay clear away from that. Mainly I try to do very clean medicinal scents because I know something I can trust. Hence why I use, I love the um, part of the Korean skincare process because very rarely do they have any kind of scent to it. It's very sterile, generic, and it's something I could easily use on my skin. Um, some habits that I've used to control my eczema have like something that I've just learned over the years and again everybody has different triggers some people fooders are triggered luckily I don't have that issue because I love food but like I said before mainly it's just environmental type things that have an effect on my skin um, but what I do to kind of help those situations is mainly uh, moisturizing as soon as I get out of the shower, that's very important. Uh, my skin can literally start cracking and getting ashy as soon as I get out of the shower if I don't want lotion up right away. Mainly I do it in the bathroom when the steam is still in there so that way I have extra moisture. So good tip there. Another thing I like to do is exfoliate. I exfoliate my body at least two to three times a week. I don't play that, especially, I mean, if you're just getting older, I mean, you just want to exfoliate the skin because it gets harder and harder to just maintain that moisture on its own. You're gonna have to put in a little extra work to make sure your skin stays soft and clear. So exfoliating has really helped that for me, as well as covering down any kind of eczema outbreak I may have, because you're always, you know, scrubbing that dead skin away. So it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, another thing I do is staying hydrated. I make sure I drink. Uh, I'm trying to get up there, but uh, not a full gallon of water, but close to. So I'll try to accomplish that during the day if I can. And that also helps to curb down any kind of uh, breakout that I may have of eczema. So that really is helpful. Also... Uh, just staying cool. Um, if it's summertime, I know that I need to be in AC all the time. So, of course, that means I'm very high maintenance. Um, but yeah, mainly, I mean, I just can't be outside in the heat for too long for my skin. Because like I said, I'll develop heat rash and from there I'll be eczema. So, I just can't really be outside for too long. So, I'm not really outdoorsy kind of girl. Spring and fall are my seasons because I can be outside all day long and not be an issue. Uh, also, for me, I like to make sure I'm wearing sunscreen, mainly for my face, because uh, my face is very sensitive as far as being exposed to the sun. So I make sure that I put the SPF 50 on it so that way I don't get eczema on my face, but just to make sure that it's not going to be have any kind of dry patches or breakout because that has happened before when I developed sunburn. So in order to just prevent that at all costs, I just make sure I lather on the sunscreen whenever I leave the house every single day. So today, uh, those lucky viewers are able to see all the tips, tools, tricks, products that I use in order to keep my eczema at bay. Um, mainly it's the products that I use, but one particular tool that I love to use in the shower is this Japanese towel scrub very long. Um, you can use it all over your body. I mainly love to use it for my back because you can easily just do like this, scrub the back really well. I never got an eggs on my back, but I mean, just overall it's good to exfoliate with. Mainly it's good for, I just mainly get like a little bit now on my, uh, my leg if I have it at all, but I just like to scrub all, all around, hold it, rub it down, and then I know that my skin's made buttery soft when I get out of the shower, so I don't have to worry about anything. So that's one of the tools I use. Um, I get this on, I get these on Amazon and they normally come like through a pack for like maybe 12 bucks. So not too bad. I just wash them and then maybe every few months I replace them. So not too bad of an investment. Uh... This is prescription based. Uh, this is the cream that I use that you have to get prescribed by a doctor, unfortunately, or a dermatologist. Just go if you have the eczema issue and just say, hey, what's going on? I use a particular brand called um, Mama Tesson. I'm not sure if it's a generic brand or not, but this has saved my skin. I pretty much have been using it since childhood as far as if I have any breakouts. Um, luckily, there are few and far between these days, but this is just what I use just in case anything happens that I can't really control naturally. So. Definitely love this, been again using it forever. 
Um, this is a new body wash that I've been using. It's the Dermalogica Conditioning Body Wash. This has been great. Um, I know especially if I do stay true to my routine and moisturize right back out of the shower, my skin will be silky soft after this and I very rarely have any kind of eczema breakout but since I've been using this. Um, I also like shower oils. Um, Lots of Tomics are a really good one. I was trying this out for right now. So far I've loved it so I may not go back. But I like the shower oil to shave my legs with as well as exfoliate with with that towel. So the Lots of Tomics shower oil is really good as well. I got a little sample size one time for like nine bucks from Sephora and that lasted me for months. So um, if you just want to try a little something so that way you can try and see if it's going to work for you. Just get the sample and then you'll be good to go. Um, this is doo -doo 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 -doo, the Glyton Exfoliating Body Lotion. I have the body wash of this as well. I use this maybe uh, a couple times a week just to kind of really slough off the skin. It seems like I'm overdoing it with exfoliating, but I really can't do it enough, especially because we think about eczema, you know, it's like the dry patchiness. So when you exfoliate off that, it really helps to prevent and then calm down any existing ex eczema that you may have. Um, this is the Peter Thomas Raw. Uh, correction pads. This is supposed to be for the face but I use this for the body instead. I really love it. I normally put it all over my arms, on my knees and stuff that's going to be naturally pretty rough. It's not necessarily for my eczema but just to again exploit the skin and keep the, the dead Move, remove all the dead skin cells so that way they're not going to just lay on top of you and not go anywhere make your skin rough and patchy. So. Alright guys, hopefully this video is very informative. You saw my, well you heard my triggers, my habits, and all the products that I use to battle eczema. Um, it's going to be a lifelong battle but luckily it's not as bad as it used to be and I'm very grateful for that. Any questions for me, leave a comment down below. Any kind of other videos you'd like to see about different kinds of issues, let me know. And uh, hopefully you guys come back and definitely subscribe. Mm -hmm.